Whoa. Oh, sugar. Sure Looks like I see a few stouts in the in the stands. I got a farmer. Oh yeah, look at that. It's always scary when it keeps coming and coming and coming. <laughs> oh yeah. It just keeps rising. You're just not sure what to do with it. Four episodes in a row without a spill, boys. Dude, trying to get this figured it. out. I know. Chalk it up. I got my hand a little messy. Cheers, guys. I don't even know. I'm going to start drinking this. Cheers, <laughs> boys. Hey, you might want to let that one settle. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. There we go. What are you drinking, Mike? Uh, so I'm drinking from Fiden's Ducks with Axes, double India Pale Ale. Uh, the hops in this one, Nelson Galaxy Citra and Peacherine. Uh, eight and a half, or no, I'm sorry, eight percent ABV. Um, let's see if I could get a date on this one. This isn't too terribly. Oh no, I guess it's not that old. Uh, November twenty second. Yep, November. Yeah. Um, Two months. Yep. Yeah, so first sip's good. I've had it before um, a while ago. I uh, can't remember. That's a cola exactly. with vitamin C. This one. Oh yeah, look at yeah. that right there on the side. I can't remember where vitamin C is. Somewhere in the Midwest. Let's see. Or East Coast. I'll see if it says. Uh, but that that uh, there was a big turnout for that one, right, Jimmy? They've done that one twice. Yeah. The uh, um, the people, the, the crowd on the um, the day it came out was like off the charts. Um, it's funny because like, uh, <laughs> it's insane. It's it's really good by all means, but um, yeah. <clears throat> And the, no, the year before, the year before that, it was it was they had a, a special glass that they released with it and a T-shirt, and the line was you know easily a hundred and fifty deep, two hundred deep. That's crazy. It's really <laughs> nice. Um, it's it's what you come to expect from Fivens, though, right? I mean, it's not it's so much better than ninety nine percent of the stuff out there. The peacherines are very nice. It's definitely got presence in it. Um, so vitamin C brewing is in uh, Weymouth, Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, which, if I remember, is kind of south of Boston, in the Brockton area, kind of south of the city on the coast. Yeah, all the collabs that Fidens have done with them have been really good. I've never had anything from vitamin C, I don't think, but I've had collabs with several different breweries that have done them with them. I'll have to check them out. Next time I'm down in that in Boston, I'll see if I can swim through there, grab some stuff. Nice. I'm drinking a smoothie sour from Great Notion. This is mango, coconut, mochi, fruit in the can. Uh, 5.2%. And uh, this one has mango, orange, and natural flavors. Maybe coconut. Uh, like it says, mango, coconut, mochi. So I assume it has coconut. And... Uh, mm. Yeah, it's really good, really smooth, really easy to drink. They did this one last year, so I was happy that they did it again this year because I really liked it last time. That's a good one. I like that a lot. It tastes like mango juice. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fresh squeezed. Yeah, baby. Delicious. Paul, what are you on there? Well, gentlemen, I've got a Everybody's Brewing Uh stout uh everybody's brewing is up in the gorge area in uh, white salmon absolutely killer uh, uh brewery if you're ever up that way um good beers on tap excellent food right across from the bridge from uh, hood river so they call this one uh uncle stepdad <laughs> let that sit in let that marinate for a minute <laughs> it's a bourbon barrel aged stout and it says uh Uncle Stepdad started his life at Everybody's Imperial as an Everybody's Imperial Stout. He's already pretty cool, but after 10 months of aging in bourbon barrels during the winter, spring, and summer, he's a new man. Wiser, more sophisticated, <laughs> and complex. Uncle Stepdad is ready to get back into the world 
and maybe even the backyard. <laughs> That's uh, that one's worth drinking just for the name. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Poetic. Yeah, I I had it on tap there. I don't know, six months ago or so. And I think it was that's the earlier you, version. Yeah, that's one I'd grab off the shelf just from reading the name, not even looking at what it is. <laughs> I couldn't believe they were canning it. I was in a, I was in the market a week ago and just walked through the beer section and I didn't know they canned this one. I'm like, oh yeah, Uncle De- Uncle Stepdad's coming home with me. <laughs> it's fantastic. Daddy. It's really good. It's a 10.5. Um, <clears throat> super smooth and uh, really solid. Enjoying it. Yeah, there was you like a, my um, my shirt, Paul. I can't see it. I can't see it, mate. Oh, there we go. You got your glasses on, goddammit. Oh yeah, look at that. You're. Oh, you know what? I was. I almost pulled one of those off. Yeah, baby, ruse. Nice. I got that when I was with you when we went there. <laughs> oh yeah. That's great. Jimmy, what are you drinking? Yeah, I was just I was just thinking that there was um, with the name there was a, there's a, a brewery out in Hartford, Connecticut called City Steam, but they have a they have a beer called Naughty Nurse, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> like okay, uh, <laughs> there, um, yeah. there's a brewery actually, here called good, uh, yeah. Wasatch Brewing, and um, they have a bunch that are like plays on like Mormon stuff. Because they're here in Salt Lake. One is called the Polygamy Porter. It's pretty yes, good. Yes. Another one's called yes. like Outer Darkness, which is like a place that you go like instead of hell, like you're just like floating off in the darkness for eternity <laughs> <laughs> in Mormon doctrine. That's awesome. And then yeah, a bunch of funny stuff. That's classic. <clears throat> Nothing so like this... rallying up the locals. <laughs> <laughs> I went with a local one here tonight. So uh, this has a creative name. It's called Oatmeal Stout. And uh, it's by, weird. Uh, yeah. I wonder what they okay. mean by that. Well, yeah, I wonder real, what's in it. Real wordsmiths. Is that uh, like a lager? Like a pilsner? <laughs> um, I, it, actually, it's, oh, it's an oatmeal stout. <laughs> I don't know. Never would have guessed. Um, yeah. Um, and it's from Browns Brewing uh, down here um, in uh, Schenectady, New York, and Schenectady, um, mm-hmm, that too. And uh, it's a cool operation. They have a bunch of beers that they do. Um, really nice kind of diversity. A great tap room. Um, I've got a couple of them, but uh, this one's pretty smooth. Kind of a uh, um, yeah. It's just deep and dark. And what was the ABV and, on that? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, five and a half. Is it, does it just seem too thin? Uh, it's a little thinner than I was expecting, but I'm I feel like any stout below like 9% just always feels like too watery for me. Like, I don't know. I, I've just gotten used to stouts being like thick and heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what threw me a little bit, but, uh, um, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's, it doesn't have that, that burnt, um, flavor to it that you can get sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm enjoying it. It's been sitting out for a while too. I let it come up to room temperature. Yeah. Hey, always. That's, that's a which is like move. thirty yeah, degrees it's a, here. But. It's a KG veteran move. <laughs> that's yeah, by, right. By episode uh, sixteen, he's he's learned. Uh, it up. <laughs> he's got a he's got a blow dryer on that bad boy. <laughs> I just strap it to the dog for a while. He's all hot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let him run that's around. A good call. That's a good call on the smoothie. Shake yeah, it up shake a little bit. Up. Right? Yeah. yeah. He's cashed out over here. Nice. Well, uh, for this episode, we decided to do something completely different we haven't done before, and. Um, I thought about doing this because I just have a huge photo book collection now, which has really just been from the last couple of years. I wasn't buying books very much until I made my own. And then I got really interested in seeing everybody else's. And uh, so we decided we'd share our favorite books. And um, apart from sharing some of our favorite books, really the main point of this episode is seeing who spills beer on their $200 collector's edition (laughs) book that they're sharing (laughs) but um get them separate i'm gonna start with this one which is one of my all-time favorite books and 
I got this one uh, because of Ron and Sarah. I was hanging out at their house in 2020, um, showing them my like a sample of my first book. And they had just gotten this one, which is Within the Stone by Bill Atkinson. And so I was looking through this while they were looking through mine. And this is just like all abstract photography, but it's all like extreme macro photos of precious stones. And so there's just like some really sick stuff in here, trying not to knock my glass over. But uh, I was just blown away because none of it, like unless you read the introduction that tells like, you know, what the project is about, you would just have no idea. A lot of these resemble like aerials or um, landscapes. Even some of them look like the ocean with like a sunset sky. There's just tons of tons of crazy stuff in here. Just just really nice, like abstract stuff, really colorful things. And uh, wow, that's crazy. Looks mm. like an explosion. Yeah, this one on the back cover is pretty cool, too. So I got this on Amazon for like 20 bucks maybe used and it's wow. like I don't know it's kind of like dented on the corners but you can completely enjoy it like nobody has scribbled on the pages or anything so anyone watching this I would definitely like a lot of books that aren't in print anymore by like Elliot Porter David Munch um or just anybody a lot of times you can find their books on Amazon used between like five and twenty thirty dollars and I feel like they usually come in good condition, but my thought is like, if I buy a book and I really like it that much, I can just buy a brand new copy somehow, you know, like track it down, but it's a great way to like get a bunch of books without breaking the bank and, uh, Test check out a lot of a stuff. Bit. Yeah. Especially the older stuff too. So yeah, yeah, definitely recommend this one. Um, it's just a journey, a visual journey, really different than anything else I've ever seen. It's cool. He used to uh, work for, cool. he was like the the CEO of Microsoft or Apple something. He's like a pretty famous guy, but he, he did photography on the side as well. William Neal knows him, so. Hmm. What, was it, what was the name of it again? Oh, I got no, it, Within I, the Stone. Oh, Within the Stone, yeah. Yeah. yeah and usually uh, what I found is that the ratings, like if they're rating the quality of the book, it's usually pretty accurate. Yeah, like this one on the inside, it looks brand new. The pages are really white. Nothing's yeah. bent or anything. Just the jacket is a little beat up, but. Yeah. Well, according to Amazon, there was only one left in stock and I just bought it. So fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hey, he's a man of action. That's right. It, it could go to the highest bidder though, uh, at Mike Dionola. Come on. Yeah, exactly. The um, thriftbooks.com is also. A, a good place for those. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff. All right. So I'll go next. Starting out with a little bit of a flex here. So that's um, a major flex. The place, that's a major oh. flex. <laughs> the place no one, uh, the place no one knows, um, or no one knew. Sorry, uh, by Elliot Porter. Um, it's a book about Glen Canyon. And so this book was uh, gifted to me by Colin, Colleen Minnick. Um, it's a fantastic book. Um, if you can get your hands on it, it's definitely worth getting, um, mainly because of the history of it. So hopefully I don't screw up the history, but my understanding. So you have Glen Canyon that um, was where the Colorado River flows through. They dammed it up, formed Lake Powell. Um, so most of the images, images in this book that were taken from 1960 to 1963, which is actually when the book was published and also when the dam was built, um, that stuff just doesn't exist anymore. It's under however many feet of water Lake Powell is. Um, so from a historical context, this is one of the most important modern photography books there are. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's it's extensive. I, I don't know how many pages it is, but it's, you know, almost 200 pages, um, you know, and it's a lot more, you know, uh, kind of photo essay type of um, style to it. Like the way um, he's just like flopping it around and bending the pages and like, yeah, those things go yeah, I'm, for I'm, like I'm $200, $300 used. I'm, hold, I'm holding it very carefully, but uh, Ooh, I yeah, like that. So, <laughs> nice. yeah, I know yeah. it's actually that I just by chance fl uh, opened to that one. That's actually my favorite image in the entire book. Um, that is beauty. But yeah, light. 
Yep. It's is uh, this is an amazing book. Very difficult to get. Um, I very much appreciate Colleen for getting uh, getting me this copy, and um, I I spent a lot of time with this book. It's very inspiring. And um, Elliot Porter, for those of you who don't know. Um, you know, a lot of people, when you think about old photographers, you think of Ansel Adams as kind of being the father of, you know, grandfather, whatever, of uh, landscape photography. Um, but a lot of his work, most of his work was kind of, or at least the stuff he was most known for is kind of the grand landscape stuff. Elliot Porter was very much the kind of intimate photography um, uh photographer of that era so he kind of pioneered that in fact his book uh intimate well, landscapes which came out what's that yeah and i think he coined the term intimate landscape, intimate landscape. pretty much yeah right. yep so he published he that was, book years he was after also this. a pioneer of color photography in nature photography mm -hmm. uh ansel right. adams right. and them like they didn't take anything seriously unless it was black and white like color was seen as right. kind of like a gimmick and yep. uh elliot porter like with his intentional use of it totally changed that and Yep. Right. So, um, you know, certainly not as well known, at least to the general public, as somebody like Ansel Adams, but um, nonetheless, very important in um, uh, the kind of timeline of nature photography. And certainly um, a lot of the work that we see these days um, is very uh, representative of the type of stuff that Elliot Porter put out there. So great book. Um, very, very lucky to own a copy of it. Yeah. And I am also, uh, thanks to you guys, a proud owner of the book as well. I think, is this what it looks like without the jacket, Mike, or is this a different version? Yeah, no, that's that's without the jacket. So yours is like this look, too, then? You have the same one? No, no, no. That's that's the hard copy. This that, that one, I think, was, that might be the original. I think that was 1963. It looks that, pretty I think old, that's the like first the copy. printing and stuff. Yeah. So this is mine is a commemorative edition um, that was that was printed in 2000. I think yours oh. was from 1963. I think I that's a know. first edition. Yeah. God damn, dude. I didn't know. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I was looking no for how they put a signature in here, even I was like, dude, did you sign this? Yeah. Here? But uh, no, I think that's um, a, I think that's a first edition. I didn't know they ever did a reproduction. I've always wanted them to like Several. redo Elliot Porter's books with like modern printing techniques because his photographs yeah. are so incredible. Even though they're from like the '60s and stuff, they deserve to be printed as best as possible because a yeah. lot of this is pretty you know dated printing. They it was printed in '63, which I think is what you have. Um, Let me see if '66. This one says winner of the 1964 Kerry Thomas Award. I don't know if it has like a printing date though. Mm. I don't see one anywhere. Yeah, it's printed by the Sierra Club. Um, Shit, I'm going to sell this thing then. <laughs> uh, so 19, 1963 was the first 1966 1998 and then 2000 which is the one that i have um but yeah um regardless if you get your hands on a copy um what you should definitely do i feel like uh, it's, it's an iconic it's, it's book mm -hmm. yeah i just yeah, love like the conservation aspect of it like uh david brower says in the forward like Elliot Porter by photographing this place. Like the reason this happened is because like the public didn't really have a choice. Like they weren't like, hey, you can either have this like incredible canyon um, in its natural state or we can turn it into a dam. It was just like, hey, we want to dam this part of the river that nobody knows about. And so it's like, nobody knew why they should care or anything. Even David Brower like didn't really know. That's why like he allowed it to happen and like made a mm -hmm. compromise to not dam a different part of the Colorado that goes through Dinosaur National Monument. So. Right. Um, like as photographers, when we expose like what places look like, especially in a way that like really reveals their true beauty and everything, we give people a choice, you know, it's like, do you want to keep it how it looks like this, like in these photographs, or do you want it to be underwater or mined or developed or, you know, taken out of existence? So, uh, I think that's like a really powerful part of photography that not a lot of people think about. So I really love like the, the objective of this book. Like that's, that's why this one means a lot to me. And, I always wanted to get it because I backpack in a lot of the canyons that are in close proximity to Glen Canyon and they're so incredible and I just think like wow I can't believe they damned something that looks like this and maybe even more scenic that's way more extensive like it's really uh 
troubling to think of yeah. to imagine it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot for giving me this. You guys, I love you. you yeah, man. <laughs> so um, I went with uh, my first one here is Ebb and Flow uh, by nice. TJ Thorne. Um, and uh, this is uh, TJ's first book. Um, and in here is uh, just a, a collection of his just really amazing, thoughtful um, images of water, um, reflections. Let me just see if I can grab some. But he uh, just <clears throat> just spent like uh, just a, an amazing amount of time <clears throat> working with water in some of his favorite places. And um, what's uh, what's really amazing is just that when you look through here, there's just like an amazing diversity of of images that you can create or that you can capture with flowing water. Um, a lot of these are really quick uh, shutters, but uh, but some of them have some some ICM in them. Um, and it's just a it's a beautiful book. Really nice forward in there as well. That's the most incredible thing about that book. Every single image is of the same thing, but they're all so unique. It's, right. The diversity in there is just remarkable. It's just yeah, <laughs> like it's just it's hard to believe it's all the same stuff same. I've never seen or thought could happen you know like i've mm -hmm. looked at a lot of water and still not seen a, like 90 percent of those scenes that he captured and i've been with him like while he's shooting that stuff and he'll just like be pointing down at the water like in the same spot for like three hours straight just playing with yeah. it and i'm like you're a savage <laughs> 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 or a mental case <laughs> well whatever whatever they approach was it's really it's pretty amazing the result just, was nice yeah yeah i just beautifully printed as well you know i just really yeah he he put so much work into that book and uh it just really came out so well i mean he's so very detail oriented when it comes to his photography um and uh i, I know he put his entire heart and soul into that book and it shows for sure mm. great book that's very very cool very cool yeah it's awesome and also that it's it's really well printed that's the same printer that i use for my books nice uh first book i'm going to share um isn't his last book however it's it's the previous one it's from uh, hans uh, uh, really enjoys enjoy this one uh beyond landscapes um got the uh, forward here forward here by uh, bruce percy it's got a lot of really great um, Iceland images in this book. It also has um, some really uh, um, fantastic uh, Sweden images. I mean, you can kind of see, you know, some of the work wow. there. That's awesome. Like, uh, and it's got a lot of nice, um, what I really like about this, it's got a lot of nice series of images. It's got uh, some plantation series images in it. It's got some farmland uh, series images in it, you know, stuff like, like this. Yeah, that stuff's wow. crazy. Yeah. The human-made landscapes. Yeah, that stuff's really great. And then um, I don't know how he composes those scenes. They just look so complicated. But yeah, he finds he, like a he pulls natural, it off every time. Yeah, yeah, from a limited amount of time in the air, you know, it's right. Yeah, it's kind of the time he's paying, paying by the minute for that air flight time. Yeah. Yeah, After but then a couple a of, of wine <laughs> or two, a six or his balls off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just hanging loose. <laughs> and this is mud sediments. I mean, look at that. Look at that, you guys. Wow. Yeah. There's a and those look like on... aerials. Are, are those aerials or those are small? I think they're aerials. They're in Spain. Okay. I think yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. Spain stuffs from the air, which he uh, talked about <clears> on the <throat> on the show. And, and then Spanish uh, wine too. Yes, you did. Yeah, <laughs> polluted love Spanish water. wine. This is polluted water. Who makes polluted water look amazing? Yeah, and that's like the eerie aspect of those that that scene. Yeah, it's beautiful, so beautiful, but it's destruction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, really, an excellent book. Um, Still in stock on Cozy, right? It absolutely is. Yeah, yeah. That's Cozy's pretty uh, pretty easy and uh, 
to get books out of. I've ordered quite a few from just them. Just throws it. Just throws oh. it. Back. <laughs> I got a I got a pillow on my couch. <laughs> yeah. Next. You didn't check if <laughs> Big Sexy was back there. He would have been killed. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Next oh. book. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, that one's still in stock. And Kozu books are fairly priced too. They're they're like yes. fifty, like between like thirty and fifty pounds. Which nowadays mm-hmm. is a lot less because the pound is like a dollar twenty, I think, dollar fifteen. It's pretty low. Yep. It used yep. to be like two yeah. bucks. Shipping is the most US, recent ones. Uh, the shipping is pretty reasonable too, and it, it comes really. Yeah, well they have a they have a satellite place in Florida, so it's still like domestic shipping, I think. Yeah, I was gonna say I think it only cost me like twelve bucks or something. I was surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they got a they got a warehouse in uh, Florida. Okay, that makes sense. Then. Yeah, Cozy's cool. They've done a lot of great stuff. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> All right, so check this out. Uh, my good friend Jim Basia gave me this for Christmas. Whoa. This thing is an absolute beast of a book. It's huge. Damn. Biggest book I own. And this, this is uh, <laughs> Josel Nam Kung, a retrospective. So it's all like large format film photography. And a lot of it is, uh, sorry, the page is a little stuck together. A lot of it is from uh, <laughs> um, like the 80s and stuff. Like a, a lot of the, some of the most amazing images in here are from like the 80s and, and before I was ever born. So um, a lot of great writing in here too. Art Wolf wrote the foreword. Um, but just just really classy, like great compositions. Um, there's one of my favorite images. And this is from like 84 wow. or something. This is sick ice image. It's on the cover wow. too. That's really cool. 1980. Jeez. Uh, yeah, just really thoughtful, well done photography. So I, I was really stoked that he gave me this. I don't know if it's in stock still, but maybe you could find it used on Amazon. This might be like a collector's edition too, because it feels pretty fancy. It's got like cloth cover and stuff. But I was gonna say, even the paper, just from the sound of you turning the pages, the paper sounds like it's super high quality. Yeah, it's it's a really great book. Um, I really enjoyed sitting and looking at it. And even though it's like almost awkwardly big, like hard to carry around and turn the pages, I feel like it's it's a good thing because it forces you to like sit with it and like just fully engage with it, you know? Right. right. That's Which really is cool. like the power of making a book. You can really control the viewing environment. Nobody's going to look at it like while they're driving or doing other stuff. Right. These are pretty cool right here. Yeah. Love those. So yeah, that's that one on the left the camera, but... It's kind of cool that it is so big, so printed so largely. You can really, the detail can come out. Not very well, cost effective, probably, but uh, I mean, I don't know how much this one goes for. It's probably over a hundred dollars, but um, it's totally worth it. It's it's a super cool book. I'm really grateful that Jim sent me that. That's a yeah. great book, dude. Yeah, if Paul had a copy of that, he could take out a horse with it. <laughs> <laughs> Toss that behind there. Go right through that yeah. ship lap back there. Yeah, I got a shoulder <laughs> issue now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me keep the order the same. I'll go next. Um, so this book, this is a little bit, uh, a little bit off brand for us, but just a little bit. Uh, this is a guy Adrian Villa. Any of you guys heard of him? No. He's got a pretty big, pretty big YouTube presence. Um, his YouTube page is a a o w s, and I think that's his Instagram too. So um, this entire book is all black and white square format um images now where i say it's a little bit off brand is he he will include some man-made stuff in there um i'll see if i can find <clears throat> that's cool are they all one by one you said yeah they're all it's all black and white square format it's pretty yeah so there you go so pretty much exclusively what he does and so what i love most about this guy and why i wanted to share this one is if you watch his youtube videos his approach to photography is fantastic so he he walks around um he, he goes travels all over the world and he just walks around these places sees things and shoots and most of the time he's shooting handheld he's not using a tripod 
sometimes he is if he's doing long exposures and stuff but lots of times he just kind of lines up these compositions and shoots and it's not to say that he's sloppy with his composing at all his compositions are always phenomenal it's one of his best things about his photographs but he just goes and sees things and shoots and keeps moving and it's like yeah, he not just like whatever really analytical or right and whatever's capturing his eye like whatever like you know it's that whole concept you see something interesting Fluid. shoot it that's what he does yeah and he just tons of images and his editing is very simple too very consistent um just well edited photos and well composed photos and so i love to watch his videos when i'm in one of those ruts where i'm overthinking my photography when i'm going out and just feel like i'm not seeing anything or the work i'm coming home with is just not what i want like i'll go like watch some of his videos or since i've had the book go through his book and just kind of remind myself of that mindset of just get out there find what catches your eye you know compose it take the shot don't overthink it move on and uh you know, and, and, and just kind of enjoy the process for the process as opposed to overthinking it. So, um, from my, from my perspective and my development as a photographer, he's been a, a great inspiration in that sense and kind of, you know, keeping it, keeping it light, keeping it fun, uh, which it's supposed to be. So did you so anyway. find that book because you were following him on YouTube already or how yep. did you just Yeah. It? Yeah. YouTube and, uh, and his Instagram as well. Um, he, nice. it was about a year ago that came out. 20, I don't know, 2021, so two years ago now. Um, but nice book. Well well put together. How, how big would you um, say it is? Like 10 by 10? Uh, I'd say it's probably 8 by 12. Okay. 8 by 12? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, it's not square. Okay. Right. That's yeah. interesting that it's no, not no. square and it's all square images. Yeah, the images are all square. But, um, but yeah, I mean, again, a little bit off-brand. It's not like, a lot of man-made stuff in there, but um, just really cool, really well-composed. Kind of the heart of photography. That's cool. I like it. That's a really cool book. I haven't uh, I haven't looked at his stuff yet, but here I'll uh, let me at his Instagram right so we can get that out there. I'm pretty sure it's A O W S is his Instagram handle. Um, For me, it was tough uh, just picking out three books to share because I have like so many that I could share that are just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, AOWS is his uh, Instagram. I think I own like, I don't know, 40, 50 books now. And uh, that's great. A good, a good a good portion of them I got like for under 35 bucks on Amazon. So I definitely recommend people check out getting used yep. books on there because you can just stock up. Pick but up, a, yeah. a ton of books came out last year, 2023, like really good stuff. A lot. Yeah, it's crazy. It's inspiring. There's so much good stuff. Absolutely. But uh, I, yeah, I feel like I, I ran out of book budget <laughs> quickly. <Yeah. laughs> um, so this one, uh, the second one I'm doing here is, uh, let me just get a few things in there. It's a Rhythm of Nature uh, by Sandra Bartoka. Um, and this came one. out last year, I believe, 2022, Or was it 2022, maybe? Yeah. I think it was 2022. Was, yeah, and I that was honestly my favorite book that came out that year, that or that I got that year. Like, obviously, I couldn't see everything that came out, but yeah. So just a really cool. I mean, the cover alone, um, because she has like these uh, uh, these silver inlays on there. It just it grabs you right away. Um, really but nice throughout, design. yeah, right, yeah. It's just throughout this thing. Um, it's just really uh, images that kind of just remind me a lot of Sandra's work. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. So she does Probably because um, it is Sandra's work. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> that oatmeal stout hitting them hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Five and a half percent kicking right in the ass. Oh, that's a beautiful <laughs> photo. Yeah, those tree ones are really cool because it's just like such a simple composition, like straight yeah. on. Yep. But I think they're like double exposure, so it just has the most amazing texture look to it. Yeah. Yeah. And she she does a lot with multiple exposures. I see them mixing I see them in multiple exposure. Um, yeah. And it just uh yeah, it, it's just it's she's one of those kinds of photographers lately where you can kind of see an image and you know it's 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 hers. Um, it's printed a, a very matte. Uh, which was an interesting um, difference, kind of just stood well, out. I hope but... when people see my images, they know they're mine too, and I haven't stolen them from somewhere. Yeah, 
Well, Unsplash <laughs> has some nice stuff that you can borrow from. So, mm. <laughs> um, mm. but uh, it's yeah, I would highly recommend this one. It was really just it's it's very inspiring to look through because too, she yeah. the diversity of her work. Um, and just taking scenes that are so common, seemingly so common, but changed up and, you know, making it her own is, uh, yeah, just really, really especially wild. for me, since I don't like do any ICM or double exposure stuff, like it was a really refreshing book to look at. And it's a really nice, like kind of reset, just something completely different out of my zone. I've looked at that one multiple times. Yeah, and even the water, the water work that she does, um, you know, I, I started with TJ's book, but the, her her water imagery is very different than than his. So it's it's just another take on on a familiar subject, but right. done in a very artistic way. Super nice. Yeah, great book. Definitely recommend that one. So I'm going to reach back here to the couch again, just so you guys know. Nothing. Okay. So Nothing flying. I'm not going to um, plug this one. I've got a different book, but one of my favorites right here from my man Bennett. This one is an absolute Ooh. banger. This one's a banger Ooh. right here. We all know Never he's got a new one. We all know he's got a new one coming out. Uh, this one's going to tough to be tough to beat, but I'm sure he's going to. Um, dude, every page in this book is phenomenal. I'm sure you've heard yeah. that like yeah. hundreds of times but it's this is literally one of my favorite books and i absolutely love it and appreciate it alex noriega doing the forward if you don't have uh, it well you... neil did the forward alex did the introduction oh, thank you for the correction yeah thank you but that's a great book thanks man you bet uh next um after that um i'm trying to get into wildlife photography a little bit and so oh, yeah? i kind of switch gears and uh i'm gonna some I'm big gonna sexy share. photos yeah <laughs> some boudoir boudoir photos yeah, <laughs> sexy. so i got a book um um from a gentleman i picked up in canada uh last time i was up there um best of bantle right here um this one is uh, bantle mostly... a place no it's his name's uh jason leo bantle okay so he calls it that um most of the images in here are wildlife photography you know like uh this type of stuff here nice um he certainly photo. has um landscape images in here mostly like grand landscape type stuff like this that's cool this but, but you said there's a lot of wildlife like are there animals in that grand landscape or yeah i mean it's a it's a mix but mostly mostly wildlife type mm. stuff yeah, that's sick. So I kind of wanted to, we don't do much on wildlife or haven't done much no. on wildlife, but- uh, Hopefully he was far away for that polar bear photo. That no one too. Jeez. Yeah. Those three can um, tear you apart. <laughs> a lot of really crazy. good stuff in here. Yeah. Beautiful portrait. Yeah. So I want to share something a little bit different and uh, there you go. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a great eagle shot on the photo uh, on the front there too. You yeah, caught that at it... like a gallery or something or a bookstore? Yeah, um, I was in a gallery up there and uh, um, beautiful gallery in downtown Banff actually. And I uh, picked up the book there. I think it was uh, winter 23. Nice. So my next one is another honker, really oh heavy, thick book. Jeez. I got it for like 15 bucks on Amazon though. Um, what? And it's in pretty good shape. And this is uh, David Munch, uh, all the photographs. One of my favorite all time photographers, just an absolute legend. And then all the writing is done by Ed Abbey, who wrote Desert Solitaire and is one of the best uh, naturalist wow. writers in my opinion. So, you know, perfect combo. Um, the only thing is it's, it's, it's signed to Michael from... Uh, <laughs> oh, you got to send it to me, dude. That's my <laughs> copy. Not, I've been looking for that. <laughs> dude, but it's not signed by Ed Abbey or David Munch, unfortunately. Yeah, never mind. But uh, That's bullshit. Every single, every single image is 
a two page spread. Um, really sick, like intimate stuff. And well, not every single image actually, but um, yeah, just really great stuff. Uh, all film photography from like the sixties and stuff, which is really impressive. He's killing it back then. Stuff that would still hold up today. This is another like really big heavy book that just makes you sit down, and just demands your attention. But um, man, there's so much good stuff in here. Like uh, just like shit like this, just texture porn. What what year was that? Uh, let me check. Hold on. Show you guys another one. <clears throat> so many images in here. Jeez. And then yeah, all the text is just awesome. And David Munch wrote some stuff for it too, which is really good. Like that. Ugh. Wow. That's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Two page spread. Yeah, David Munch is a legend. I love his work. I think he's one of the best. Him and Elliot Porter are my favorite, like old school photographers. So much time. Yeah. That's pretty so cool. much time in the field. Oh, that's awesome. Petrified wood. Wow. Yeah. Is I, he I think it's medium format or large. I would assume it might be large. Um, medium for sure. But uh, yeah, let me see if it says the year. 1979. Dude. It, it's done wow. pretty well. The It's pretty well reproduced. Look at this fucker. Dude. Film cool. photography. That's so killer. Yeah. Yeah, this one's really sick. Good stuff. Uh, it's a classic. Look for it on Amazon. Amazon. You use that for weightlifting too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my uh, third and final. Uh, this is Heal um, by my boy Andrew Baruffi. Um, So Andrew lives in uh, Rochester, New York area now. Um, originally well, i don't know if he's originally from utah but uh spent a lot of time in utah growing up um and so this most of this book is from utah i'm not doing a great job holding it up um so really really solid images uh you can really you know feel his connection to these places um it's another one of my favorite images from the book um i and love the writing in this book mm -hmm. every single photo has an accompanying essay right yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, what I what I love most about it is so it's titled "Heal," um, and you know, kind of the backstory of uh, this book and photography and Andrew's life and his life in general um, is just that he battled severe depression for a long period of time, um, and it was through uh, Zion and, and the kind of uh, high desert of utah and photography that he started to break through that and started to kind of heal hence the name um and a lot of the essays that accompany um these photos kind of tangentially revolve around that and he does a great job of um putting words to the scenes and so it really helps bring the photographs to life so much more so i've enjoyed reading um all of the writing that he's done to accompanying these photos and so, and you know, really a, a great book that um, I, I love spending time with. Um, I'm pretty sure I've read everything in it at least once by now. Um, I definitely have a few of my favorite images and essays that I return to uh, very frequently. Here's another one of my favorites. Um, love winter, love winter minimalism. So, um, just really good stuff. And uh, Andrew's a great guy. Um, so happy to put that one out there. I think this that is, one is really nice. Of, Relatively recent, I think uh, it's got a date in it. It was like 2021, maybe. Yeah, or 22, maybe a couple of years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> I said I need to pick that one up again. I, I looked through it initially, and then uh, I, I still haven't read through everything I, I want to. But yeah, I, I have so many books on my shelf that I haven't even opened up yet because I just I don't like to just flip through them. I like to go yeah. consecutively and like read look at the pictures, read the next essay, like stuff like that. Cause that's how they intended, I think. And just yeah, have absolutely. like a uninterrupted experience. And that's so hard to find with four kids. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> so I have a, so I have like a, a thing underneath my TV in my living room and it's got a, a kind of bookends on it and I've got all my books. I don't have as many as you. I probably got like 20 or so. 
and probably like once a month, I just pull one out randomly and just set it on my coffee table. So it's right in front of my couch and I just, you know, constantly flipping through it. Um, nice. So that's kind of how I do it, you know, just kind of recycle them through, you know, and just uh, spend some time with it. So, yeah, because yeah. I agree, you really got to sit with them. Yeah, for sure. That, that's a good way to like, yeah, kind of revisit the same book day after day, yeah. like work on it slowly. Yep, yeah. that's a cool idea. That's a great I idea. cracked up in this uh, triple IPA from our buddies at Brujos, Lord of the Scorched Church Brujos. is my last can. 100% nice. Citra Hops. And this one is 10% ABV. Um, yeah, just uh, straight up grapefruit, orange. Nice. Citrus flavors. That's a great one. And not boozy. That is a great one. <clears throat> so, um, my Do you have third one of these uh, explode on you or something, Jimmy? Uh, Did one of them not make it? Uh, yeah, that was. Oh gross. yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, it was. That was a mess. Oh, That's the uh, typical <laughs> packing job from Paul. I know. My dog was trying to. Come roll. on. I know. He thought. He thought. He thought it was something dead in there. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> He's back over here now. It was bad. <laughs> but hey, the BBE never, never uh, does low budget packing jobs. Come on. Now we'll, we'll blame it on FedEx. There we go. Or UPS or whatever it was. But uh, my, uh, the third one I've got here today is this nice. one. Um, just by Paul Caponegro. Uh, it's Masterworks from 40 years. Um, and I was looking for this one for a long time, um, probably a couple, you know, two or three years. I could not find, I could not find it anywhere. Um, well, how, how did you by, know about it? What made you like want to hunt for it? Um, I've, I've actually looked at his work a good bit um, over the years, and um, I've just found his his treatment of of fairly familiar, common subjects just to be like super inspiring. Um, I'm just see if I can give you an example. So like here's a black and white. Just leaves. Mm. Wow. Um, and that really was elegant. probably yeah, except yeah. I mean it was probably Is it all black and white? Something. It's all black and white. Yep. Um and and like uh the book that Mike shared, you know, it's scenes with human elements in it, but also uh wow. know, pure nature and such. That's a crazy composition. Yeah, yeah. It's wild, wild stuff. Um, but the um, the way it came to me was that I, I for somehow I, I, it, I noticed like a, an, I was searching for it on some random website yet again, and a guy was selling a copy of it. Uh, and so I grabbed it right away. Um, and he said he got it out of a dumpster behind like, what? <laughs> he went like a bookstore or something, yeah. something like that. But it, it actually is stamped from somebody's library. So it was somebody's personal book. And he went in there and he grabbed a whole bunch of books out. And this happened to be one of them. So it has a little bit of wear on it, you know, from the moisture. So what'd you get it for? I think I paid like 35 bucks for it. Um, wow. But I was, I was willing to go higher. <laughs> it was really, really hard. But this is uh my favorite image of his just reindeer it's a cool story wow that's great black and that's white image. so cool like ghosts it is Damn. just it is crazy photograph just because you know a longer shutter and just the movement of those reindeer through the woods that's cool here's another one. Oh, that's, that's beautiful nice. yeah, yeah. So I was I'm his, familiar with his name. His son, like... his son is a, is still alive, uh, lives in Maine, and is oh, a okay, photographer. That's what I'm thinking of. Probably, what's his first name? Jean Paul. Paul is Paul. Yeah, Paul Cap. It's saying I think he's a junior. Um, mm. He does a lot of okay. very, very, very abstract stuff. Um, if I remember correctly. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, his son is a. Reason. There's a lot of pretty, pretty well known well. photographer too. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can pull him up real quick. I think I think maybe he, um, Paul is known 
his, his dad is known for his sunflower work. That's cool. Uh, he's he's photographed. It's a great black and white subject. Of, yeah. That contrast. Um, but it was just a. I was so psyched to get it. Nice. And I'm glad that guy dumped <laughs> jumped into a dumpster and one man's thought trash. Some, thought somebody would want it. He was so psyched to sell it. Yeah, uh, Paul. Paul, I forgot to mention. Uh, thanks for the glass, buddy. This was a uh, Christmas gift from my boy here. Oh nice. shit, dude! Beautiful. Your host glass. <laughs> Dope. I forgot glass. about that thing. You have one too, yeah. Me? Yeah. No. Oh yeah. What? Just for me. No, I know. I I got one for uh, you boys coming. Oh. Yeah, they're gonna Love be it. back in the. They're gonna be back in the game. It's it's. They're opening up uh, here in a few weeks, and uh, with this weekend's release, they're actually going to have glassware back. Every time I go there, it's like very limited on glassware, and I mean they're good on shirts and t-shirts and kind of like that stuff, but they'll only give you a glass or two here and there. But hopefully, uh, they'll be back in business with uh, more of that stuff. Good stuff. Awesome. Oh, books. you got another book? I don't. I mean, you tapped out. <clears throat> I could dig up I mean, another one. Yeah, take 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 one, Mike. I don't. I only brought well, I, I got right two. Here. Uh, go for it. I got I got one more that I was thinking about sharing. So, grab so I nice. I received William Neal's brand new book, Sanctuary of Stone, and uh, Ooh, baby, I own uh, quite a. So I actually found out about William Neal because I think it was Guy Tall. Um, he recommended his retrospective book when he was down to like 50 copies. So I got that like right before it sold out. And that's how I found out about William Neal. And uh, obviously like he's a good friend of mine and uh, what well, we've become good friends uh, because he wrote the forward of my book and stuff. And I was really grateful for that. That was a really amazing contribution to my book. But um, I've been a huge fan of William Neal's photography ever since I found it. I mean, I call him Bill. So, um, yeah, but I, I honestly think this is the best reproduction of his photography yet. Um, I mean, look at this from 1986. Look at this photo. It's awesome. So sick. You could post that today and people would be this. freaking out. Yeah. 86, you said? Yeah, so who knows what he was shooting it with, like clunky Jeez. setup. And yeah, just really exquisite photography, really nice image sequencing. Um, and this was the first book in a while that Bill self-published, maybe the first book he's ever self-published. So you can really see a lot of him like in every aspect of this book, like the pairings, um, obviously the text. And then, uh, yeah, just the whole book from front to back is just a really great representation of Bill's work. And uh, I'm really proud of him. And I think everyone should get it. It's a great edition. It's a great book. It's a great book. So you, you call I I call him are we not supposed to call him Bill because I call him Bill too I don't know him anywhere near as well as you do. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's, funny. Funny. Do that. <laughs> it's not like a ride of oh, Yeah, I know he introduced himself as Bill. So like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> want to make sure I wasn't like overstepping my bounds. All right, so I, I have one more that um, I wanted to get out there. This is probably probably one of my favorite photography books that I have bought in recent years. Um, I'll hold it up in a second because it's big, but Rene Algesheimer, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, the book, the name of the book is Voice of the Eyes. What I love about that, do you guys have this one? I do. Yeah. So what's awesome about this book is um, it's an interview kind of format. So um, he asked the same series of questions, more or less, to every single photographer that's in here. Um, and so, you know, just to, you know, everything, everybody from like Alex Noriega, Freeman Patterson, uh, Bruce Percy, TJ Thorne, Hans Strong, Guy Tall, um, Guy Tall yep. Uh, so kind of a huge range of uh, photographers and, you know, obviously, you know, include some of their photography. Let me see if I can find a page. So it's a lot, it's, it's definitely a lot of reading, um, but yeah. Uh, but it, it really kind of helps you get to know the photographers, you know, well, so, I mean, you can definitely have some kind of pictures interspersed, but a lot of it is um, just the, the interview style format, which is obviously very different for 
a uh, picture book uh, or a photography book. But um, anyway, um, great book. Um, Voice of the Eyes, pretty sure it's still available. Uh, Creative Minds and Landscape Photography. And it really does a great job of opening your eyes to their thought process, how they approach scenes, how they approach their craft. Um, it really kind of helps you get to know some of these people that you might not otherwise, you know, have a chance to kind of converse with and are kind of, the, they're all the types of questions I would want to ask them if I was sitting down with them. Um, so, you know, great, great book, great lineup of photographers and some great work in there too. Yeah, it really is impressive. And uh, even though he asked the same questions to every single photographer, the answer is very totally uh, quite a bit. And some of the answers yeah. like aren't what you would expect from that photographer either. So yeah, it is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, definitely yeah, worth getting that one for sure. Awesome. Cool. Good stuff, boys. Easy, Great easy there, Bennett. <laughs> He's there. You got to edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> woke up early. Got woken up early. Mm. Bet. As usual. <clears throat> yeah, Sweet. Uh, that was cool. That was a that was a different uh, definitely definitely a different take on what we've been doing and uh, kind of fun to share some of the books that uh, everyone's been collecting. Yeah, I and mean, that's kind of my favorite thing about photography. Like, I think the photography book is like kind of the ultimate product you can make with your work. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I love, uh, like, like I print so much, so much of my work cause I'm never satisfied with the digital version of anything, you know? And I love how like books have that tactile feel. I think that's such a huge part of photography. It's like actually mm -hmm. having a print in your hand and oh, I, yeah. I, you it's know, different. not, not to judge or, you know, you know, throw shade on anybody, but I think a lot of, you know, modern photographers just don't really care about that. They don't really care about the print. They don't care about the, well, you know, there, it's a big investment stuff. too. Like, you know, you can make an ebook for free virtually. Yep. It takes time and effort, but it doesn't right. cost you anything. Whereas a right. book costs you like $20,000 minimum to print. So yep. you really got to like believe in yourself and uh, that what you're putting forth is worth your money and also other people's money to to purchase it because you can't give it away for free. So yeah, absolutely. I think it just kind absolutely. of weeds out a lot of people and requires a lot of dedication and passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the process of putting together an ebook is uh, is really uh, valuable, informative, and you know it gets you thinking about other work that you're doing and mm -hmm. stimulates other projects and. Yeah. Definitely time consuming, but but I don't know. Yeah, there's just something so important about the tangible aspect of a of a book that I don't know, or a print for that matter. I'll just I, I yeah. don't know. Nothing nothing nothing's ever gonna like replace that for me. I mean, maybe it's kind of like a quixotic notion to think like it's always gonna end up on a piece of paper, but I, for me it's, it has to end there. If it doesn't end there, it's not done. Yeah, uh, I mean something new might come around. Mm -hmm that is superior but i can't even imagine what it might be yeah i mean there's superior. there's a sensory aspect of it like to holding it or to being it yeah, yeah. i don't know I, mm -hmm. maybe they can make Something's, like blow up dolls yeah. of photos or something i don't know yeah exactly a little k2 <laughs> k3 <laughs> oh dear <laughs> the pillow or... yeah i think it's it to the like, next uh, level once you get that print in your hand, though, um, I, I feel like it kind of it informs your your photography. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you learn a lot by printing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I when I'm out, I, I photograph strictly to print. Like I in my mind, that's that's there the entire time. Like, so how I expose how I, everything ultimately is going to end in a print, <clears throat> even though 95 percent of my photos never get printed. Um, but yeah, and it, but until you go through that process, you know, it's it's tough to I, I think it's tough to appreciate that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just thinking about it, like hanging on somebody's wall for the next 10, 20, 30 years, it yep. makes you a lot more like hypercritical of it as well. And so you can notice certain things that you want to tweak yep. or you just uh, 
analyze it more. So when you're making a book and you have like hundreds of photographs that are kind of permanent, like you can't just reprint the book whenever you want. Yeah. It makes you even yeah. more like it forces you to be even more intentional. So I think that right. really produces special things. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if your stuff's only going to end up on a computer screen, you have so much more latitude, so much more room for error. You can just like, re-edit mm -hmm. it and, and yeah. upload it again, delete the post. And post or even like it. things people would have noticed, but you print something 20 by 30, 40 by 60, everything's going to be seen. So you really need, yeah. there's an elevated level of dedication to the craft. And so anybody, I respect anybody who has, you know, the, the ability and the puts the effort into putting out a book because, you know, it reflects that dedication to the craft. Yeah. And then but someday it'll be. Uh, so I say someday it'll be thrown into a dumpster like Paul Bowman through his book. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hey, easy. <laughs> look at this. Look yeah, at this Paul landing probably, pad. It's probably look Paul this landing that pad. that uh, Paul yeah, Capanero yeah, book. Paul. I know. Like, Paul, I don't even. Who's this guy? <laughs> Very uh, nice landing back there. It's from, <laughs> it's from California. Stephen <laughs> F. Wood. Pretty close. Pittsburgh, California. Mm, there you go. Whatever. Yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> we'll have to we'll have to do this again sometime because I have yeah. tons more books that I would love to share that are really good. So, yeah, this won't be the last time. We'll see yeah, how it turns out. I probably buy Excellent. at least one a month. So, yeah, once you start buying them, it's hard to stop. Like, I, I love it. Really, yeah, is. It's really addictive. Yeah. I've At first, I was like, oh, man, like, do I really need it? Like, I've seen their photos. Yeah. But then once you start getting yeah. them, you're like, oh, this is really special. Yeah. yeah. I thought about that with the, um, yeah, no, it's just some books uh, I'm, like, hesitant on, but, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Cool. All right, well, till next time, you guys. Cheers. Cool. Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers, gentlemen. Everybody enjoyed the episode. Good stuff. Good night, guys.